In this lesson right here, what we're going to do is take a look at working with objects. All right, it's a very basic lesson, but yet a very important one. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Zach? Yeah, I would. Okay. Now, as you know, Motion Builder is not a modeling application, is it? Yeah, I've noticed that. Motion Builder seems, for the most part, to be geared only toward animation. Exactly. But we do have the ability to add elements into our scene, and for me to pull off some of the things that I'm interested in showing in this lesson, I'm going to need to add some elements. Okay. Let's take a look at how we can do this. First of all, let me go ahead and point out the layout that I'm working in right now. This isn't, you know, the editing layout, so if any of you guys out there are following along, you may want to make sure that you're set over to that layout. Let's go ahead and come down here and switch over to our asset browser, and then from inside here, I'm going to go ahead and expand templates, and then I'll come down and click on elements. And from inside here, there's a bunch of different element types that we can add into a scene, such as a camera, a cube, a light, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And throughout the next few VTMs we'll be doing, we're going to be taking a look at a lot of these things. But for this uh, particular lesson right here, what we're going to do is just drag and drop a plane in the scene, drag and drop a cube in the scene. And I'll go ahead and scale that cube up. Now, I notice when you're dragging and dropping these in that they're actually falling into the scene where you're dropping them. They're not just automatically being created at the origin. Very nice, eh? And Zach's pointing that out because some of you guys may be coming from other applications where you're used to creating something, and it does indeed put it at 000, or the origin of the world. So now I've created some very basic elements. I'd like to go ahead and start this off by showing you how to select and deselect inside of Motion Builder. This can be kind of frustrating at first if you're not exactly sure how to go about doing it. Uh, generally, you could simply come in here and double click. Okay, so as you can see, as I double click an object, you can see that it's selected because it is highlighted green, as this cube is right here. Double click here, this guy becomes highlighted. You'll also notice down here in my scene browser that as I double click on an object, that it selects that object down here as well. That's nice. Okay, now, double clicking, Zach, that could become quite tiresome after a while. Yeah, it'd probably wear me out. Yeah, so. We need to look for another way that we could go about doing this. If I hold the space bar down and click on something, it will select that object. You'll notice that it will automatically deselect the object that was selected previously. So right now I've got the cube selected. If I hold space bar down and click on the plane, my cube has now been deselected. So basically we're getting a replacement selection when we hold down the space bar. Exactly. And this is very convenient for just coming in here. If I want to deselect, just space bar down and click. Nothing selected. Click this guy. I'm just continuing holding space bar down. So deselect, select, deselect, select. Very quick, right? Very nice. Now another thing that we can do is a selection where we start adding to. If I hold the control key down, and then just do a single click, you'll notice that I have both of these guys now selected. If I click on the plane again, it deselects it, so it allows me to toggle. So I can come over here and select this guy, deselect this guy, select this, this guy here, and I'm doing this this entire time with the control key down. So that's uh, pretty important to kind of get a grasp on. Now, another one, and a very favorite one of mine, or one of my favorites, if you will, let's go ahead and spacebar click. And that is going to be holding the space bar down, and then you can go ahead and drag out a marquee selection and let go. And this will serve as a toggle, meaning that everything that's not selected will become selected, and vice versa. If it's already selected, it will become deselected. Very nice. Very convenient. Exactly. So right now, let's go ahead and demonstrate that by simply, let's go ahead and just click on the center plane right here so it's the only thing selected. So by holding space bar down and then marquee selecting around these three objects, what it's going to do is toggle the selection so that my outer cubes are now selected and my plane is deselected. Sweet. Okay. So easy enough. So with... That's basically talking about selecting and deselecting, though there is one more thing I want to point out. Some of you may be thinking, you know, well, if I, why did they even put the double click in there if you could just simply hold space bar down and click? Now, you'll see as I go through these that it's selecting again. Let me point this out down here in the scene browser. It's actually selecting the object down here. But what I want to do is come down here and actually create a real quick hierarchy. I want to take cube one and make it become a child of cube. So I'm just going to left click, drag it up to cube, drop on it, and say parent. Okay, so now you see cube's got a little plus out here that I can expand, and there's cube one underneath. So let's go ahead and close that back up. Again, I'll hold space bar. I'll click my plane. You see plane selected. Hold space bar, and I'll click over here. Click over here. Ah, look at this. So I click over here. It shows cube selected. I click over here, and this is a very light gray. Yeah. Now, I'm doing this with the space bar down because, you know, that's convenient and it doesn't wear my index finger out. Right. But now watch this. If I double click, so I'll double click on the, on the plane. It shows the plane selected. I'll double click over here on this cube. 
Ah, it opens the navigator back up for us. You got it. So there is a difference between double clicking on an object and just holding space bar and clicking on an object. So keep that in mind. If you actually need to have your scene browser open up and actually show you that object selected, then double click on it. It's good to know. Okay, so next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and move on into transforming objects. Just a, a real quick, easy look at how we can manipulate an object around the scene as far as transformations are concerned. And for any of you guys out there that may get kind of baffled when I say the word transformations, I'm talking about moving, rotating, or scaling. And instead of saying moving, I'm actually going to start saying translating. Okay? So to do this, first of all, very, very simple stuff. Make sure your mouse is over your viewer when you use these hotkeys. I'm just going to hit T, and T is going to activate my translate tool so that I can now start moving this guy around the scene. You can see that that's exactly what I'm doing. I also get these what's called translation arrows, an RGB, a red one, a green one, and a blue one, and basically that matches X, Y, and Z, and you can see that down over here as well. So I can simply click on one of these arrows and drag, and what that's going to do is lock it in that particular axis. So I can lock this over here to Z, and I can go up and down in Y if I wanted to. And just a quick note to those of you who may be coming from 3D Studio Max, Max is going to be a Z up world, and when you bring your, your uh, models into Motion Builder, you're going to convert to a Y up world. Just something to be aware of. Okay. So uh, a couple other things. Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and talk real quick, even though as I'm starting to switch between these, I want to go ahead and open up my Transforms window. So there's my Transforms window. And right now, this is you can see my Move or Translate, Rotate, and Scale. And right now that you can see my Translate tool is activated. It's highlighted right now. Okay. So we saw that T allowed us to do Translate. R allows us to do Rotation. And you can see right now that the rotate tool has been highlighted. Keys are easy to okay. remember. And we get a series of what are called rotation rings. And we can use these rotation rings to rotate on a given axis. So I can rotate around Y. I can rotate around X. You get the idea? Oh, yeah. Okay, we also, and of course around Z as well, you got a blue one out here. And you have a brown one back here. And what the brown one will do is as I come in here and I rotate around my screen, you'll see that the brown one, the brown ring is always facing right on with the camera, okay, or with the viewer itself. This allows me to basically rotate perpendicular to the camera. Okay. All right. So um, let's go ahead and do the last one. I'll go ahead and hit S, and this will give me my scale tool. And basically with this, I can come in here and use my scaling handles to scale it in a given axis, okay? And again, RGB, X, Y, Z. Okay, get the idea? Oh, very nice, very easy. All right, and of course I can click out in space and drag and we'll talk more about that in just a second so what I want to do now is come up over here switch back over to the move tool or translate tool and now let's talk a little bit about what's going on inside this transforms window over here first of all X Y and Z we've got numbers we can see exactly where this object is I can click on any of these given axes with the left mouse button and then drag okay Allow, you can drag like directly to a given number. Exactly. I can also double click and type in a precise number if I'd like. If I want to type in 20, or if I wanted to type in, let's double click again and say 10. Okay. And let's do something like 30. I can go the other way. So now it's sitting back up on top of the plane. So you get the idea? Yes, yeah, very nice. Very nice, absolutely. Now down at the bottom, as I go through each of these different uh, transform modes, basically you've got a series of buttons down here. You'll see that with... Uh, this transform mode right here, translate, I've got global, local, drag, and X, Y, Z. We'll talk about them in just a second. So I come over here to rotation. Now I've got global, local, drag, X, Y, Z, and a, an additive. And if I come down here to scale, now I've got uniform, and I've got volume that's been added to the mix. Basically what we're looking at is are we doing this transformation in global space, or are we doing it in, local, in the object's local space? A quick example, if I wanted to come over here and rotate this cube, let's say we want to rotate it around in the Z axis, and then come back up here uh, to translation mode. Now, take a look at my uh, translation arrows right now. Y is pointing up, X is pointing left and right, uh, Z is pointing to and away from me. Okay, kind of rotate this around. They're matching over here with yeah. the world coordinates. If I switch this into local mode, now you can see that its local coordinate space was basically rotated when I did the rotation a second ago with the object. It's actually orienting itself with how the object is rotated. So now I can actually move it along 
its y-axis from when it was created its y-axis of course was pointing straight up and down now it's been rotated so almost at a 45 degree angle and I can move this at that 45 degree angle or I can move it along X or I can move it along Z as well okay cool all right so uh, so that's uh, global and local now drag and X Y and Z this is pretty cool right now if I it's in drag mode so if I place my mouse anywhere in the viewer left click and drag I can drag this thing around freely like I'm doing right now if I come over here and click X Y and Z now what's going to happen is my mouse is going to turn into left mouse button will will basically constrain it to X okay middle mouse button will constrain it up and down to Y and right mouse button will constrain it to Z. Okay. Very cool. I like that. So that's the difference between drag and X, Y, and Z. So let's go ahead and change that back over. And we'll just kind of move this down a little bit so we don't lose track. All right, let's go ahead and come over here. Same things going on except for, you know, right now with drag, if we click and drag out in the viewer anywhere, nothing's going to happen. We need to simply place it somewhere inside of our rotation rings, and now we can drag it around freely like such. Okay. And again, if I switch it over to X, Y, Z, what that's going to do is the left mouse button is going to be around X, and you can see that actually happening up there on the rotation rings. Middle mouse button, right mouse button. Okay? And additive, what additive is going to do, well, let's take a look at this first. Let's go back to one of these. Look at our numbers up here. Let's go ahead and do it in X. We've got minus 41 right now, so we're rotating, rotating, rotating. And you'll notice how our number, as we continue to go, let's make it let's make it actually go larger. It gets all the way up to a point, then it shrinks, and it basically it's going it's wrapping itself around in a circle. I it see. doesn't continue going in one direction. We're dealing with at oil. some point it shifts over to a negative rotation instead of just keep increasing. Instead of increasing, right, and then it'll just shift back around and go back positive, and it just stays in this little loop right there. Okay. So if we need it to work with numbers that just continued going, going, going as we continued rotating it in a given axis. Like, like if I needed a 3,000 degree rotation? Exactly. I could just come over here to additive. Now watch what happens as I, let's go ahead and just go, basically this time we'll do it in uh, Y. So it continues. So Y is now negative 288. We continue negative 300, negative 400, negative 500. Uh, the number just keeps climbing. And the climbing. number just keeps on climbing, keeps on climbing. And you know, you see I can let go of the middle mouse button and then drag again and it continues to climb. But the moment I turn additive back off, and, oh, excuse me, let's go ahead and come back over here to drag. Look at that. It changes to negative 68. Nice and slick. Okay. So real quick, let's go ahead and jump down here to scale real fast. Uh, same thing with local and, uh, or excuse me, global and local. Uh, right now, uni. Take a guess what uni means. Mm. <sighs> uh, off the top of my head, I'd say it'd be uh, uniform, uniform scaling. Uniform scaling. So let's just simply click out here in space, and that's exactly what we're getting right now is uniform scaling. Of course, we don't have to do uniform. We could do non-uniform by coming up here and dragging on one of these given axes. We could also go from uniform over here to X, Y, Z, and what that's going to do now is, again, left mouse button is going to be X, uh, Y, and Z. You, get, you know that one. And then volume, volume is very handy. Let's go ahead and switch over here to volume. And what volume will allow me to do is maintain my volume as I scale in a given axis. So right now, if I was to scale this thing down in Z, what's going to happen is it's going to increase in X and Y. And that's what's happening. And it's oh, that's nice. And if I bring it back up, it's going to start decreasing. Okay, so I'm maintaining the volume of the object itself. Okay? That's cool. I like that. Pretty cool. So this is just a quick look at our transformation modes, uh, how we can go in there and translate, rotate, and scale. Just don't forget, as far as hotkeys are concerned, T will allow us to go in there. Let's go ahead and, yeah, we'll leave it like that. So T will allow us to do translation mode. R is going to give us rotation mode. And S is going to give us our scale mode. Okay. So very easy to remember. Yeah, absolutely. So um, since we're talking about working with objects, how do you delete one of these things if we need to delete it? Oh, that's pretty simple. I shall hit the delete key. And it says, delete the selected models, yes, and it's gone. All okay. right. Yeah, not trying to be too simple there. I just wanted to get that out of the scene. Right. So let's go ahead and come back over here and select this cube right there. Uh, last thing I want to talk about real quick is just going to be cut, copy, and paste. With an object selected, I can simply come up to edit, cut, copy, and paste. Only th uh, three that I'm interested in at the moment. If I want to cut it, basically I'm going to get a little dialog that's going to pop up and ask if I want to cut the model. I'm going to tell it okay, so it's now been cut. I can then come back in and paste it, and there it is again. I can also copy. Let's go ahead and start using some hotkeys now. I'm going to do Control-C to copy it. I'll go ahead and hit T so that I activate my 
translate mode. Again, make sure your mouse is inside the viewer when you do this. Now I'm going to hit Control V, and Control V just did a paste. You can see down here that I just got a new cube added to my scene, and we can just go ahead and move this over to the side. So we go ahead and do another Control V, and we get another one added to the scene as well. So I like that the commands and the hotkeys are very similar to operating systems. Just, yeah, regular Windows, right. regular Windows copy, cut, and paste. Very nice. Okay. So this is all I wanted to show for this given lesson right here. It's just basically how you can get in there and start selecting, deselecting objects so you don't feel lost trying to do that because, you know, when you just simply click on something, it doesn't select it. And Nothing happens. A lot of people may be used to that from, you know, other applications. So, uh, you know, we moved on from there. We started talking about the different uh, transform modes, and we went in so how we could grab translate, rotate, and scale. And then we talked a little bit about local and global and drag and X, Y, and Z and a few different ways that we can use our transforms window over here. And then we just wrapped it up with a real quick uh, cut, copy, and paste. All right. So that's going to wrap up this lesson right here. hope you guys got a lot out of it. Thanks.